from NAB in Las Vegas, visualizing your data inside your favorite NLE with Digital Anarchy. This is Mac Voices. Today's Mac Voices is supported by Collide. Collide ensures only secure devices can access your cloud apps. It's zero trust tailor-made for Okta. Book a demo today at collide.com slash Mac Voices. Mac Voices is at NAB in Las Vegas. I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, it's time for one of our annual visits. We have several of them, it seems, because they keep releasing great products with Jim Tierney of Digital Anarchy. Jim, it's good to see you yeah, again. Good to see you again. Yes, we keep doing this. Yep. Yeah, it's nice to be back at NAB and on the floor and seems there are people here. So Yeah, and great. we just saw um, someone, I guess, we I haven't seen since pre-pandemic, and maybe you have. I don't know, Roger. Uh, no, I mean, like, that's the first time I've seen him it, since. It, it doesn't seem possible that it's been, you know, multiple like years. years. yeah. Yeah, so it's crazy. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about a new product you're showing. Yep. Um, what do you have for us this time? So we're coming out with a new product, new plugin for uh, Premiere, After Effects, and Final Cut, and hopefully Resolve at some point, uh, called Data Storyteller. And it's really designed to let you do uh, animated data visualizations and incorporate that you know, into your video production pretty easily. Uh, there's a lot of data out there, and people are trying to visualize it in different ways. And we're hopeful that this will make it easier for folks to you know, make them part of uh, video production. When I saw the release on this, I was really excited about it because right now, a lot of us have cobbled things together. In, in my case, you do some animations with Keynote. Yeah. But the thing is, you go into Keynote, you make it, then you export it, you import it into your Final Cut project or Premiere or whatever, and then something changes. And then you got to go through the whole process over again. So if you can build it into my NLE, it's going to make life so much easier. Yeah, and that's the hope. You know, we're starting off with three different types of, well, five different types of maps. Uh, line, bar, and scatter, uh, or bubble. Uh, and then also uh, incorporating US maps and world maps. So you can use you know, data files to drive all those charts, uh, including you know, simple uh, you know, Excel or CSV files, or you can have much more complex uh, spreadsheets that you animate through or have multiple sheets that you animate through. So it's, it's pretty neat. You probably, I know you're not there yet, but are, is there any thought about doing longitude, latitude, those kind of coordinates, incorporating that once when we're talking about maps? Well, yeah, I mean, that's exactly it, right? So, you know, we know not necessarily lat long, but, uh, you know, you can do by country name, you can do with, with the U.S., you can do it by zip code, you can do it by county, um, and I'll show an example of that. But, um, you know, so if you have, like, U.S. census data or something, um, you can animate every different county uh, and have that, you know, animate on the screen. Um, with world maps, if you are doing, you know, some sort of visualization comparing different countries together, uh, you know, you just enter in the, um, you know, names of the countries and it'll, you know, the data will drive that part of the map Very that nice. country. Very nice. Um, let's have a look at some of it. All right, sure. All right, so this is the world map. Um, there's different projections you can do. You can have a traditional map, uh, like a flat map, but you can also have this globe, have a globe um, that animates. Uh, you can obviously rotate that around, but the more important thing that you're seeing is this is a climate change data set that's driving what uh, uh, the colors of the countries, right? And, you know, you can have it just fade on. We could also have, um, say, multiple years, uh, multiple data sets showing multiple years and having the, uh, you know, countries change color as the temperature gets warmer. Um, we also have the U.S. map. And this is another example of, uh, you know, average temperature over time. And this is showing multiple files. So if I plays back, you know, this is one year, and then as we move, you know, forward in time, it's going to start changing, and you can see how this different, these different data sets cause the map to change. Um, and the, one of the cool things about the U.S. map is that you can also display it uh, by zip code or county. 
So you can have, if you've got a data set that's, say, from the U.S. Census or um, COVID cases or something like that, you can have all this animate on, change over time. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just a cool way of visualizing this type of data. And then back for more normal charts, uh, we have bar charts, which is you know, kind of the standard charts that you would expect. Bar charts, line charts, uh, scatter or bubble charts. Um, you know, I think scatter charts are really amazing in the way that uh, you can display multiple dimensions of data. So just one of the cool things that we've done with this is really set it up so that you can deal with large data sets and make interesting visualizations like of them. Um, you know, of course, um, where is line chart? Yeah. yeah, in this case, we've got uh, line charts. And so you can take these and you know, make them with small data sets, and that's certainly supported. You can import any Excel or CSV file, but, um, and this is one of the more basic charts, but, you know, as you saw with the scatter chart, uh, there's a lot of data points here, and you're actually visualizing a lot of different, um, you know, attributes of the data. So, it's pretty cool, and we're uh, looking forward to getting it out there and seeing what people do with it, and getting feedback from yeah, I, I, when we were talking earlier, I didn't realize that you already had a lot of that sophistication built in for zip codes and all. So yeah. that is very, very impressive and opens up all kind of ideas about how you could show data, but also show it evolve over time. Yeah, I mean, there's just so much data out there, both big, big data and small data. Um, and people are just trying to visualize it in different ways. And there's lots of stories that you can tell with data. And so, you know, for folks either doing it for corporate, for documentaries, you know, for news, for all the different ways that, you know, you, you might want to tell stories with data, um, you know, hopefully it'll make it a lot easier for video editors to do that type of work. The unfair question about, do you have any idea about when this will be available? We're sh hoping for in the next month and a half. That's kind okay. of the goal. I mean, it's, we're, it's, it's going into beta now. Um, and there will be a public beta pretty shortly, uh, so folks can download it from digitalanarchy.com and, and play around with it. And um, and the full release should be out in a month and a half, two months at the most, I would think. Very nice, very nice. And uh, it'll be one ninety nine, and uh, works in Premiere, After Effects, Final Cut. Excellent. And that's it. So that's very cool. I. I I love what, and I'm, I know it's only going to get better. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, you know, we're using a library called D3 on the back end, and that should allow us to incorporate, you know, add more charts, um, you know, in the future. Uh, this is kind of 1.0 and where we're at with it, but, uh, you know, we definitely have some plans for expanding the types of visualizations you can do, the types of charts. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that we can do with it. So we're pretty excited about it. So to be clear, right now it's available for Premiere? Uh, well, right now it's not available for anything. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> we're, we're still in beta. Right. Um, but yeah, it'll be, 1.0 will be available for After Effects, Premiere, and Final Cut, and then they'll probably re-resolve uh, version once we get the first version out. Um, and uh, yeah, cool. Um, the place where they can go to find out about this when it becomes available and everything else you do is? Uh, digitalanarchy.com. Jim, thanks so much. Good to see you. Thanks, Chuck. Appreciate it. Folks, more from NAB in Las Vegas. I'm Chuck Joyner. Thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices.
Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.